its adherents, going back to Sitkin, say, no, no, it's a planet. It's a giant planet. It's on an orbit with 3,600 year period. Every 3,600 years it comes into the inner solar system with chance of collision with or at least brushing very close to the Earth. Some say it's not even a planet, it's a, it's a white dwarf or it's a small star. Some say it's a star with planets going around it. And it's one of those planets that's inhabited. And this is based on the interpretations, primarily by Sitkin, of what the Sumerians saw. So for years now, there's been this search to find Nibiru. And starting about 2007, people began to claim it was there and they could see it. And, of course, the astronomers were all part of a grand conspiracy. The astronomers would never tell you about this. But one of the things that was on the Internet for months as the best pictures of Nibiru was these two on the left. Now, they're kind of interesting. You can see the object is getting bigger, as if it were coming closer. If you look, however, at the pattern of stars, you'll see they're completely fixed. So it isn't moving like a planet, it's just expanding. And it turns out, the picture on the right by the Hubble is what it really is. It's a so-called planetary nebula, gas being blown out of a star, far, far, far away. And I am indebted to a student who told me this. I posted this saying, hey, this is fixed, it looks like an expanding gas cloud. And, uh, and I got this wonderful email saying, hey, hey, I can help, I can help, I know what it is. It's V838 Mon, a variable star. And you can look it up. And I did, and, and there was HST picture. So uh, that was a good thing. But these stories, once they're on the web, you know, by the way, you can never erase anything from the web? <laughs> Google keep, keeps everything. That's how I could go back and show you the original movie trailer or the first ad for the Institute for Human Continuity. They've long since been pulled from the web, but they're still there. And so bad news stays around just as long as good news. For a long time, the proponents said that Nibiru was hiding behind the sun. So we couldn't see it. Now, you know, briefly that might be okay, but three years of hiding behind the sun? Uh, you, you think the orbit mechanics, you know, it's here and the Earth's here and it's there. Anyway, uh, it was visible to a few people and on the left, you see an example of it behind this, coming just beside the sun, the little thing. Now, you'll notice this doesn't look like a planet at all. This is a second star, a second sun. So we've now gone from Nibiru being an obscure, distant planet to being something that rivals the sun in brightness. The left one, I think, is just a camera flaw. The right one, I have no idea. I suspect that was photoshopped in. But, uh, but I don't think you could ever take a real thing like that. A lot of people... Uh, even today say they can prove Nibiru is real because if they point their cell phone camera at the sun and click it, they will get the picture of the sun with Nibiru. I recommend you all try it. It's very interesting. The chances are you will. You will see the bright sun and then you'll see a fainter thing next to it. This is internal reflection of the lens. It's very common. And the cheaper the lens, the worse it is. So you can, uh, if, you, if you have a cheap... Uh, iPhone or whatever, you'll probably get a better picture than with a good one. This was widely put out on the web as a photograph of Nibiru, taken from Australia this last year. Do any of you know what it might be? You notice, by the way, all these published pictures, they never give you scale, they never tell you what kind of camera it was, they never give the date, so you have to be a little bit clever. You remember that Sydney, Australia had terrible dust storms some months ago? That's a picture of the sun through the dust storm. But it was widely touted on the web. And, and the way they get by with it is that it's all this hush-up secret. Pictures, for instance, from the South Pole Telescope. They insisted that NASA was building a telescope at the South Pole just to see Nibiru and study it because it could only be seen from the South Pole. That makes astronomy students think about the geometry of that, too. Uh, but uh, they pointed out, of course, that NASA wouldn't admit this. But the way the pictures got out is a brave scientist leaked them. 
and for fear of his job. And I've seen things on the internet where I say, oh, I hope the, you know, whatever is, is still okay. I hope he's being protected. I hope he's in a safe house for releasing this information. And uh, with that, there's no way you can trace back, of course, to provenance or conditions under which it was taken day, night, or whatever. So it, but if you're properly tuned, if you're really getting paranoid by now, you can believe almost anything. Here are three pictures supposedly taken with the South Pole Telescope. I haven't the faintest idea of what they are. But I did get a clever email on the left one. Uh, a high school student had written me and said, you know, what is it? it surely it looks real. This must be the South Pole Telescope picture. And then two or three days later, he wrote back and said, hey, I'm taking Photoshop in school, and I decided to see if I could make the same picture starting from nothing. And I can. He said, I could duplicate it perfectly in an hour with Photoshop in school. So I thought that was, that guy was learning something. <laughs> now, I told you that I've answered more than 2,000 questions out of maybe 4,000 I've received on the Internet. Uh, for people who can read, that works pretty well. But I've really become aware, and maybe you guys are way ahead of me, but I'm old and gray-haired. It took me a long time to recognize that YouTube was really the way to reach the audience, not written material. So I made a YouTube video. Um, this was interesting because it corresponded to that point in time just about a year ago when I'd been putting out these things on the Internet, and suddenly I was called up by a reporter I know from the Washington Post who wanted to do an article about it. And he did a very good article about this whole, whole story I've been telling you. And two days later, uh, another reporter called from the Los Angeles Times and it was picked up by the New York Times and you know several leading newspapers. First time there had been any, been any newspaper recognition of what was happening. Uh, I was delighted. Um, NASA headquarters heard about it. Now, let me explain something that may be evident to you, but is sure not evident to the people I write to. And that is that a year ago, almost no one had heard about the Debiru and the end of the world. It was very much an Internet thing. And I tell them that uh, I've raised this with scientists. I'll sit around a table with a dozen scientists for lunch. And I would say, have any of you ever heard of Debiru? No. Any of you ever heard the world's going to end in 2012? No. Uh, it's just in a different world. And same thing with the public until leading newspapers like the New York Times, the Washington Post, the LA Times published something. And just a few days later, NASA headquarters called up and said, oh my God, we're hearing all these questions about Nibiru. We better put it on the NASA website. And they suggested a YouTube video. So I said, fine. I've never done a video. Uh, but I had a couple people in the NASA Lunar Science Institute that knew how to do it. So this video was done and posted two hours after the request first came in. It was just a straightforward look at the camera and, uh, and talk. And, oops, now what do I do? And I think it, it kind of worked. Uh, you'll not play the whole thing. It's four minutes long. Hi, my name is David Morrison. I'm a space scientist at NASA Ames Research Center. For the last two years, I've been answering hundreds of questions from the public about 2012 and the supposed threat to Earth. And so now I want to take a chance to talk to some of you more directly. There is no threat to Earth in 2012. There is no danger. All the talk about a doomsday is a big hoax perpetuated on the Internet and with people trying to make money. So please don't worry about it. So. I, that went on. It was four minutes long, probably long enough for the attention span of people. And it turned out that <clears throat> from then on, a lot of my email correspondence actually was with people who had seen the video. Well, I'm going to change gear now and talk to you about my dialogue, if you will, with the public, with a largely anonymous public who write to ask an astrobiologist. <clears throat> 